Okay, I was listening to uh, my station. Uh, I technically still work for WFKU, but uh, due to technical difficulties on my end, my show, which is usually Tuesday, um, I don't know, like, if you think of morning as more like a relative time of day from waking up rather than a set grouping of hours on a standardized time clock. Ah, and oh, the thing, the cabinet. Under the sink. One under the sink, as opposed to the one right here, which keeps various medications. Like, I actually use my medicine cabinet for medicines. So, um, yeah, somebody asked about my skincare routine, because, like, apparently my dad's side of the family, we're all vampires. We're, like, Altok vampires, so Northern Ireland. By the way, Borada, which is Welsh for good morning, which I say 24 hours a day. Um, but I started saying stuff. Right. Um, morning. Right. Oh. Eastern time, um, it shifts between standard and daytime, depending on if uh, daylight savings in American vernacular has happened yet or not. So, my show is scheduled for noon to three in the afternoon. Um, 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 what's it called? Um, Eastern time, adjust for your own time zone. Um, it's morning out on the West Coast. It is deeper in the afternoon out in the UK and about half of Western Europe. So, uh, but yeah, uh, speaking of time and morning, bora da! Uh, Mazenwai in Irish Gaelic and, like I said in a previous video, I'm not giving up on Gaelic. I just, Welsh is so much easier for me. Um, but yeah, I'm not the only person who thinks this. Like, and apparently it is not just because I picked up some Welsh when I was in junior high. Like, this is a legitimate thing. People starting from English first only or English only tend to find Welsh at least a tiny bit easier. So yes, my skin care. Uh, so this is a, um, this is just a sample size piece of a, uh, uh, facial bar from Lush. They'll give you as many free samples as the employees are willing to deal with that day. Uh, at least the one out at Briarwood in Ann Arbor does. So this one, it lasts me about four or five weeks. I'd say about five average. I think the last one I got lasted me just a hair under six weeks, like maybe five and a half or something. But yeah, one of these, you know, these, uh, this sample size that was cut off for me uh, lasts about, me about five weeks. Um, this is their one called Coal Face which, if you're familiar with um, vintage slang, in addition to vintage fashion and music trends like myself, who's been antiquing since he was 12. So yes, um, <sighs> Coalface is an antiquated, <laughs> um, racialized epithet. Let your mind wander for who this should refer to, but, so, yeah, I feel a little bit unfortunate that they call it that, but then again, it's so antiquated at this point, people are just like, oh, it refers to the fact that they put, like, what is that, the charcoal, whatever in it, the activated charcoal, I know it's not, like, I don't know, I know that it's not as much of this, like, miracle additive whatever as a lot of people say, but, um... It does seem to be really good on my skin, which is kind of combination. I also have psoriasis, so at first I was thinking I might not want that. I might want something that's a little bit um, moisture to, mo moisturizing or, you know, recommended for... Um, it sounds counterintuitive, but um, when you've got psoriasis, especially if you get little outbreaks on your face, as I do, I've had it on my eyelids. It sounds counterintuitive, but you really want to get something for oily skin, um, with psoriasis, or at least I do. That seems to be best off for me. Uh, I know it sounds counterintuitive because, um, psoriasis usually looks like dry patches, but it's an autoimmune disorder, so there are certain areas of your skin. A lot of times it can be induced by stress and anxieties, a lot of times just due to illness or, um, like, like physical traumas, like abrasions, or something, like when this place was knee-deep in Isaac's bugs, that's why I now have it on my feet and um, lower legs. 
I forget the exact name for it, but yes, yeah, so yes, um, I use the uh, their coal face um, facial bar. I get it in a sample size, therefore I don't pay anything for it. And um, and then this is a uh, witch hazel base toner. And yes, this is a holy water bottle because I'm a good little blasphemous trad goth, right? Uh, so yeah, I mix my own facial toner. I use um, witch hazel that I get at Walgreens. I want to say this bottle was $4.99 at Walgreens. Um, I think I might have even paid for that on the rewards things. And I also use about one eyedropper's worth of rose water. Uh, this is ro this has rose water concentrate. I don't know what makes it different from regular rose water. As far as why I use that specifically, I, I, I had a coupon. Um, either that or a sale or something. I don't know. It was something. I got it for like half of what it was originally offered for. I do put a little bit of, um, lavender. That's what I add to my, um, I add to my toner. Uh, so then there's, I make my own eye cream. The equivalent of eye cream is this. I mix it. It's in a little eyedropper bottle. I got the bottle for like, I don't know, like $3 at Whole Foods. Uh, I use a base of vitamin E oil, so I fill that about uh, about half of this. I also add a, yeah, chamomile is because I get dark under eye circles, and I added a little bit of angelica in Yehovah oil, um, just because I liked the smell. And so after, so yeah, after cleanse, and then the toner, and then the eye cream, which I start after I... So, I start with an empty eyedropper. I do two drops for each eye. And, uh, and then I empty out the dropper just because it, I don't know, I think it's a tiny bit faster than um, emptying it out at the beginning. Um, and yeah, then I just like shake that to make sure everything is mixed. And my moisturizer would be the, uh, the Pons Rejuvenesce Anti-Wrinkle Cream. I don't, it was what was, it's what was there. And I bought this jar, I want to say about two years ago, at least two years ago. So this is how long this jar has lasted me. And, uh, yeah, this is just what I, I don't know. I don't do anything special. It's just, uh, after this, you know, you, you'd see now. Um, I also use sunblock, but, uh, yeah, right now I have sunblock that I use a facial stick because I sweat like a pig even before I, uh, started my, um, my, um, my HRT, so I, I just always, like, broken out of sweat over nothing. Like, it could, like, there was, oh, shit. One time I specifically remember, and this is one of the times that my best ex and I were back on again. There's a reason he's my best ex, because I just couldn't quit him for a while. But, uh, but no, yeah, one time, like, this was about a year or two before I started that, I was literally just, like, hanging up my laundry, um, and, you know, folding and putting away the, uh, the stuff that I don't hang. Um, yeah, I was just, like, hanging up my laundry. It was the middle of January. I'm going back and forth. It was not a hot apartment. We tended to keep it at about, like, 68 or so in the winter. But no, I was just, like, I just broke out of sweat just putting away my laundry in the middle of January. So, like, winter. Like, one of the coldest months of the year in Michigan typically speaking. And this here, this is, this is just my prescription. It's kind of a gel. I guess more, it's like a jelly, I suppose, because it looks like a jar of Vaseline, but there's some, uh, tree amsinolone, 0.1% ointment, 454 GM. So I'm assuming gram. Yeah. One pound, 454 grams. Okay. So yeah, that's my skincare. Uh, I don't think I need any on 
my arms right now. Ooh, yeah, aside from just, like I said, I don't do anything special. It just, at some point, I just accept that my dad's side of the family, we all age really well. At least those of us who take after... Yeah, his dad was in the same case. Like I, uh, My dad's father um, had acute psoriasis of the liver his last year or so. And I'm, I'm using more uh, delicate language because there was a uh, there was a video of mine that has been permanently demonetized because of some basic facts of life mentioned in said video. I'll link it in the description below so you can judge whether or not this seemed advertiser unfriendly to you. But one of the most benign little story time vids I ever did. My dad, my paternal grandfather, I myself, who's like my dad, I am number three out of four. Granted, my dad's uh, sisters were all full siblings. My older two sisters um, are each half siblings, but you know, in our family, it just, it's like, no, these are your sisters. None of this half sister shit, unless we're talking about um, like medical um, histories like family medical histories, because, you know, we don't want, you know, it's like, Ruby grew up with me about half the year, me and my younger sister. Um, my mother's eldest, she was, um, she lived with us until, uh, I want to say just before my, yeah, just before my sixth birthday, so her, uh, she pretty much got married right out of high school and then left the country. <laughs> because my brother-in-law on that side was uh, the exchange student from Hong Kong, and they moved to England, and that is, that is uh, one of the reasons that I stayed with her in uh, the UK over the summers when I was in junior high and high school. I was saying something about things. Oh, right, family. So, yeah, my uh, my dad's uh, father had acute cirrhosis of the liver his last year and some. Uh, definitely his last year. Most of his friends didn't think there was anything wrong with him, like, physically. <laughs> physically, they didn't think there was anything wrong with him. Mentally! <laughs> Well, I guess to be fair, they were his friends for a reason. They might not have picked up on that, but that's another story for another time. Actually, I don't know that story, so that's another story for somebody else to tell, because here's a funny story. My, uh, my paternal grandfather shuffled off his mortal coil almost exactly a year to the day from when I was born, and that's how my dad knew I was going to be a boy. Uh, <laughs> uh, granted, he got his boy in the most roundabout way one could, um, all things considered, I suppose, but... Yeah, that has nothing to do with my, uh, my little, uh, gendered history there. That actually had nothing to do with, uh, my little history for why my dad had his boy, but, um... Uh, I didn't know that until I was about 15, I want to say, shortly after I turned 15. Uh, yeah, 15, maybe 14. So yeah, I'd, a I'd actually been, as I am, for, yeah, I definitely had uh, the little uh, symptoms, as they say, uh, since I was at least, I want to say three or four. I want to say three or four. I want to say I... Because uh, I remember this one time my dad doodled a lot. Uh, he drew more than my mother did, but my mother was also more of a musician than he ever was, ever could have been, ever would have been. But yeah, my mother was the uh, singer. My dad never went to school for art. For art. I think maybe he wanted to, because he... Uh, Especially before his head injury, he used to draw a lot. But, uh, yeah, this, uh, this would be my, uh, my current sunblock. Bear Republic, uh, mineral sunscreen lotion, diamond dust holographic shimmer, and it is glittery. I use a face stick on my face, though. This is the face stick. So, and it does indeed sparkle and... <laughs> Yes, that is why I have it, because I'm a dork. But, 
Right. Dad used to draw. And I remember this one time... I was either three or four. I wasn't very old. I wasn't in school yet. I remember that much. If you want me to remember any more details, I... I just... No. No. That, that is... That is just going to be... Uh, Self-harm with extra steps if you ask me to uh, remember any more details than that. I know I wasn't in school yet. My dad was making this drawing. Just this little drawing on one of those yellow legal pads. This was before my mother discovered there is a company that makes pink legal pads. And, uh, but I remember she started using those when I was about seven. Please don't ask why I knew I was seven when she started using those. Uh, had to do with the variation of my school uniform that started in second grade. So that's why I know it. I think we were school shopping when she discovered those and started using those. Um, at least that would be make the most sense. But yeah, my mother had pink-ass legal pads before everybody had multicolored, multi-pastel-colored notepads and everything. So, yeah, my dad was just drawing this little, just this little simple um, doodle. Uh, his little drawings like that. That one... At least based on what I probably remember of it, kind of reminded me a little bit of Charles Schultz's peanut style in his drawing. Um, I don't think he was especially going for that kind of look. Um, I think he was just drawing. I think he was just drawing to entertain me and maybe my younger sister. And so it was just this little drawing that he did, just this random family, and... He said, uh, pointing to the, uh, the adult woman figure in his drawing, so this is the mother, and I said, that's mommy. He said, yep, that's right. And then he pointed to the adult man figure in the drawing, and he said, that's, uh, that's, um, that's the dad, that's the father. And I said, that's you. He said, yeah, that's right. And, um, pointed to the, uh, the little girl in the drawing, he says, and that's the sister or to mommy and daddy, that's the daughter. I said, that's Molly, which would be my younger sister. He said, that's right. And he points to the little boy. And he says, that's the son or to the mommy and daddy or the brother to the sister. I said, and that's me. And I think he just laughed it off as like, kids being weird. Uh, I know as far as that kind of stuff went, uh, when I would be um, displaying various gendered weirdnesses as a child, oh, it would set my mother off. Like, my dad, I think he just kind of rolled with it. I think on some level, he knew, but at the same time, this was just far enough outside his comfort zone that he would have rather not talked about it. I think he was fine just kind of knowing in his own way that, <laughs> at least on some level, um, I was his boy, and <laughs> that's just how it worked out in our family. So yeah, my, my dad, uh, like my dad, I'm the only boy out of four, but my eldest two are half-sisters. His are full siblings to him, and he's the only boy out of four. We're also number three out of four, each of us. Um... And so, yeah, when I'd say to people, because uh, I get a lot of people periodically anyway, periodically enough anyway, uh, because uh, for somebody born and generally speaking raised in the U.S., uh, again, like, I spent summers with my eldest half-sister from my mother's side in the U.K., with her and my brother-in-law, so, like, I don't know, granted, I was like 12 when that started, is that really in the upbringing period, or is, like, adolescence, even early adolescence, this weird, a little less than formative period, like, and if it, you are in a less than formative period, is that part of your upbringing, or is that another situation entirely? Like, what decides what age we are when we're being raised by family members, right? I, right, my name. So, people notice that 
for somebody born and raised in the U.S., but, uh, what was I saying? Right, dad. So, like I said, my dad, for a number of reasons, really, really knew that I was going to be his boy. And yet, I think I mentioned in a previous but recent enough video that that my dad named his two daughters, so his eldest and his youngest, after himself. Like, he says that his eldest, who is Ruby Ellen, and my dad was Ray Allen. He swore up and down that he was not intentionally naming my um, older sister Ruby after himself. That this was not something he intended to do. His second wife, who um, is still with us, uh, she's doing mostly okay. Last I talked to my sister on that side, uh, not doing great, doing better than she was around Christmas time, but uh, the woman, oh gosh, she was nine years older than my dad. They met in, I think they met in AA. Uh, so yeah, my dad, he, um, um, his second wife, she said that, she acknowledged that, uh, my father insists that Ruby Ellen is not named after himself and his mother, because the Ruby was after his mother, and that was, she was born, um, during the first major cancer scare that my paternal grandmother had, but, um, paternal grandmother also had another good ten years after that. Yes, I was about three, three and a half, when she shuffled off to... The Hinterlands, or so I'm going to call it right now, because why the heck not? So then what happened? So, let's see. So Ruby was after his mother, or at least that part of my sister's name was after his mother, uh, our paternal grandmother. Ellen was definitely after himself, because that was not our paternal grandmother's middle name. Her middle name was... I want to say Elizabeth. Um, so, yeah. And you gotta do some really awkward um, linguistics etymology to get Ellen out of Elizabeth. Back in a second. So I'm gonna do a formal show-and-tell um, little lookbook kind of video with, I want to say, my top five favorite pairs of jeans. This is one of them. They have they're too layered. I'll get to this later. Uh, so yeah, Ruby was definitely named after my father. To a degree, he was not willing to admit, <laughs> anyway. Uh, he was very upfront that my younger sister, Molly Ray, uh, was given her middle name after him, though uh, they went with a traditionally feminine spelling with that, so R-A-E. But me, both dead name and uh, the name I actually use, which is now a legal name, as was evidenced in, I think it was, my last successful live stream. Uh, but yeah, it is my legal name. It is uh, Rowan Quentin Jarman McElroy. The Jarman was taken from possibly my favorite film director, Derek Jarman. Uh... Uh, his work kind of changed my life on certain levels, and is this, uh, I can unload a couple things from here, actually, no, I can unload this one, and what the hell do I have, hey, uh, what do I have 1.2 millimeter crochet hook in for? Oh, that's right, I started a project, that is, okay, <laughs> but yeah, uh, he planned to name me after his, would have been his uncle, but... Childhood, Scarlet Fever, 1927, I believe, at the age of about seven or eight. Uh, so yeah, uh, paternal great-uncle, it's, it's a family name, and he was named after uh, one of the patron saints of Ulster, uh, Rowan of Laura, which I've probably mangled to some extent or another, but oh well, that's life, <laughs> ain't it?
And, uh, then what happens? So, yeah, I just went with the name that would have, uh, that my dad would have went with if I'd come out right. <laughs> That's pr pretty much a primary reason why I went with that one, because, uh, even down to the, um, Irish Gaelic spelling. Uh, because, you know, people in the States, like, they do comment that it is an unusual name, stateside. Uh, in fact, I think howmanyofme.com, which their database comes from the U.S. Census Bureau, so you can see how many people in the United States have your same uh, first and last name combination. I am the only one with my first and last name together. I am one of, I want to say, fewer than 10 people with the hyphenation, uh, the hyphenated last name of Jarman Dash McElroy. <laughs> I'm one of several thousand uh, McElroys, but I'm one of, I believe, fewer than 1,500 uh, people in the United States with the first name Ruan. R-U-A-D-H-A-N. Ruan. So, yes, I'm one of... I, I'm literally one of a kind as far as first and last name goes, and I'm one of fewer than 1,500 people in the United States uh, with the first name Ruan. Uh, again, the traditional Gaelic form. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> that's interesting, isn't it? Uh, it is a far more common name in Ireland for a lot of reasons. For, star for starters, it is the language. Officially, it is part of the le local language. But it's not by that much. It's not by that much, because I still occasionally run into people um, online from Ireland who say that I'm the first person they've met with the first name Ruin. And <laughs> and yeah, it's it's kind of funny. The first such person I met of that, uh, um, who said that, and... Uh, seemingly, you know, was being truthful in their claim of being from Ireland. Actually, I think they were she. Um, somebody on LiveJournal. I forget exactly which community. It was either uh, an LGBT LiveJournal group or a pagan LiveJournal group. Please don't ask me to remember exactly which it was, because those were the primary LiveJournal groups I was in that year. Um, but yeah, so, uh, ah, uh, okay, yeah, um, did my face, um, gave you a talk through my facial routine. I did do this. That's right. Um, so yeah, uh, I guess I'm good <laughs> to go with this and I have about five minutes to find my shoes. You know what? I'll figure out a top. Okay, there's this one really gorgeous shawl I was looking for, but I can't find it right now, which probably means it is either in the laundry basket or on a chair waiting to be washed properly. And it does not go in with the regular loads, so... Um, I think that's a dry clean piece of mine. So I'm going out in this. It's, uh, this one's from Target. I could probably easily, uh, I don't know. I've been out of practice with crochet for a while, but, um, easily enough, all things considered, whip up a duplicate. Ah, uh, ah, uh, so that's about it. I don't know. I'm going to uh, go out tonight. Uh, it is not a special event night out at, um, what's the place called? Necto. Nectarine Ballroom. Originally known as Second Chance. Or Last Chance. Something like that. Um, uh, is this? No, this is not my thing. That's another thing. That's a thing I meant to make a project with ages ago, but get some volumizing powder. Uh, 
Okay, so... All right, bats and kisses, and um, wear your sunblock, take care of yourselves, and as always, hit the thumbs to denote your um, feelings of enjoyment regarding this complete nonsense of mine. Uh, subscribe and bell notifications if you haven't already. If you have more dollars and cents, I have a PayPal tip jar, a um, Patreon, uh, wherein you can subscribe to my music. I also have Bandcamp. You can just go buy music outright and not, you know, at $5 a month, wherein I might release two singles a year. I'm trying to get it back into scheduling myself a little bit easier. Ah! Uh, and, uh, and then what happens is, uh, I've also got a new single coming out on a compilation from Mystic Fragments Records next month. Go find them on Bandcamp. And... Bats and kisses, and take care again, and goodbye!